Okay, th this session is on our SWOT application. Um, the agenda, we're going to basically have an overview of SWOT and talk about um, the SWOT for Windows application and the SWOT for Android and SWOT for iOS. Um, and also we're gonna have a bit of a focus on the SWOT administrator portal. Um, even though most of you on the call may not be administrators, it's really important to actually understand how SWOT works so that you can basically get the most value out of the application. Um, so I'm just gonna meet, mute you, Steve, just a bit of feedback there. Ultimately, SWOT's target audience is sales reps within a um, B2B environment, typically selling inventory-based items um, with a repeat um, established um, channel. So they're basically selling to the same customers over. They might be adding new customers, but where Sales Matrix is really going to help, um, the SWOT tool is, is around that repeat selling to an established customer base. Our whole proposition, it comes around this formula. Growth is a, is a formula of acquisition plus retention plus attachment. Acquisition is around new tools, um, sorry, new customers. Um, and we're not gonna help you with new customers. We're gonna focus on retention. Hey, Steve, you keep unmuting yourself. Did you want to say something? No, 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 just having a bit of trouble with it, that's all. Yeah, let me mute you because there's a lot of feedback coming through if that's all right. Um, so don't touch anything now. Um, you, you're muted. You should still be able to he hear me though. Um, yeah, I was just saying growth is a formula of acquisition plus retention plus attachment. The whole premise of SWOT is around retention and attachment. How do I retain the customers that I have and ensure that I'm still selling the same products or um, you know, getting the same amount of revenue from them? And importantly, how do I upsell or cross-sell them to other product lines um, to, to grow the revenue from that customer base? We're not necessarily going to help you with the new customers. We're going to really focus on that retention and attachment piece. And that's the real underlying premise of the SWOT application. Um, we do have three products in the suite. So you know that th this tool that we're talking about today is the sales rep tool. So it's designed for the reps out in the field or the reps who are regularly dealing with customers. Um, we do have our mainstay product called Sales Matrix, which typically is the tool for the sales manager. It's a far more detailed tool at a macro level across all your, your, your customers. We had a session on this yesterday and there is a recording available if you're interested in knowing more about the Data Cube tool. Um, SWAT is the mobile app. As I mentioned, it's really designed to simplify things down and make it mobile for the reps out in the field. Um, and then you have our dashboard. So traditional style reporting around um, dashboards and, and um, you know, graphical reporting, these sort of things. Um, we can connect the dashboards to basically any data source, not just your ERP solution or your inventory management tool. We do connect directly to most ERP and um, accounting and inventory management systems on the market. Um, that's not an exhaustive list, but we, we, we in fact um, have more than that. Um, I just wanna make sure I'm sharing the right screen here, guys. Um, yep, I am. Um, I think most of the people on the call are one of those solutions on the screen. But let, let's jump in and talk about SWAT. What, what is SWAT? SWAT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. The idea is that we take, you know, the buzzword at the moment is artificial intelligence. At the end of the day, it's mathematics. We take some mathematics, we analyze your data, and we present broken down into these four areas, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, information about your customers and what's going on, um, as well as your products and what's going on. And so the idea is it's like the playbook for your sales rep. You should be using this on a regular basis before you speak or visit your clients. Um, and you'll be able to get a real clear understanding of what they are buying, but also what they're not buying and what the potential upsell opportunities are with this these clients and what threats is their margin decreasing? Are, are they have they stopped buying certain products, uh, etc.? So that's that's the, the fundamental premise. Now, what you need to understand is the way the data is being pulled from your ERP system then determines how um, correlated those strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are to the customer. So by that I mean we have a script that is running that is pulling the specific ways that you group your customers from 
um, your ERP system. I, I note there's quite a few people from HSK, FTA group on the call. Uh, we've done a lot of work with Campbell and Jake and, and Rachel of late around getting those groupings, particularly for the Providor groups, right? So this example is historically, you didn't group by things like specialty providors, general providors, um, Indian providors or Asian providors. What we've done in your business central, your ERP system is those groups have been created and, and customers assigned to them. That way we're able to do better comparisons within the SWOT tool around what are the products that others of similar ilk are buying. So this can work across the board. If you're grouping your bakeries as bakeries, you're gonna get a certain level of correlation that appears when we look at opportunities for those um, particular um, customers. If you're grouping them as the different types of bakeries, i.e. they might be Vietnamese bakeries, they might be um, chain bakeries like Baker's Delight, et cetera, then potentially you're gonna get even better correlation because the granularity of those groupings makes a better like for like for comparison. So the key thing is those groupings typically happen in your ERP system. And there's a script that actually pulls the relevant groupings and we can have up to five groupings per customer, per product that then is leveraged within SWOT to do the category comparisons, to do the um, suggestive selling comparisons within the, the artificial intelligence engine that sits underneath SWOT. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually just going to open um, up into SWOT. I'm gonna use a, a recent example that we've got and you're gonna have a look at, this client is using a tache. Um, and so there is a script that determines what data is being pulled out of the product area of a tache, what data is being pulled out of the customer area. So those of you on the call, and there's a number of you who use a tache, we're using, for example, the sort field, the category field, um, the sales rep field, the territory field, and the contact field, from the customer master file as methods of grouping these customers, which means that those then are used by the artificial intelligence engine as a means of comparing like for like. The same applies, there are five different groupings available, only two are being used in this example, the supplier and the product group are being used as methods of grouping. So within the script, I can pull that information in and that becomes available to me in SWOT. I then am able to basically determine um, which of those categories are used by the artificial intelligence engine to do the like for like comparison. And the way we do that is we tick the box. So I want to use the category and the territory as my like for like comparison. I want to use the product group and the um, something else I can use there to, to do my comparison. I, I've got that ability to um, do that within the application itself. I think this was supplier and then these ones were blank so i could compare what products within a certain product group what products within the category i hope that's making sense so when we now jump into swap which i'm about to do on my phone the way that those opportunities are being identified is really driven by those that those groups and so sometimes we we have worked with clients where they say well the the the, the products that they're suggestive selling aren't actually bought by that particular group. Well, that's because we're using the wrong method of grouping in order to basically do those comparisons. And that is something that we can change. So I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen there and actually start sharing my shit screen on my phone. Um, and then that way we can jump into SWAT. Just bear with me a moment. Do that again. So now you'll see that I've got um, my phone, find my SWAT icon. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. Uh, I won't log into that one actually. I was showing someone this the other day. I think I was testing a login. Uh, let me use this one. So I can now log into SWAT. SWAT's available from the Android App Store, the iOS App Store, and the Windows App Store. Um, and basically, 
it's effectively the same product. You will find some differences across the versions, but that relates to the various applications. The first thing that we will highlight is there are colors on this screen. There's a traffic light on the left and a color coding of the name. That actually has meaning. The traffic light on the left will represent this customer's position amongst all your customers as far as revenue. If I scroll down there, you can see the sixth customer there is American Metal. They are considered a high revenue customer. They're one of our highest revenue customers. Therefore, I've got a green traffic light next to them. The guys directly above them are a low revenue customer. They've got a traffic light of red. So they're not really one of our big customers. So that's what the color coding means there. You'll also see the color coding of the text. The green is a high margin customer. Black is average margin and red is low margin customer. So that's when you open up SWOT and you see your list of customers, you're seeing a list of customers that are relevant to you. Now, some of you may be able to see all customers within your customer set. Others will be limited to the customers that they have access to. And that is managed by your administrator. So basically within the settings, if you've got access to all, you can still apply a filter. You'll see down the settings area, I actually have a thing called a customer filter. And this example, I'm on the customer filter C1JW, which might be my sales rep code. That can be changed if I have administration capability to change that. If I don't, I can't change it. The sales, the sale, the customer filter will be locked. Um, just looking at the people on the call, the majority of you, you will be locked to your set of customers. So the list should be very relevant. Now, the other thing I will draw your attention to on the screen is the top right is a little tick in what we call a hamburger menu, the little three horizontal lines that look like a hamburger. This is a filter. Now, those within the HSK group on the call, we've actually added a few new filters for you guys recently. Um, and we were about to roll this out around your short stock, et cetera. But you will see here that the, there are um, set filters. So the top four there are fixed filters within um, SWAT, where you can have a look at your top opportunities, your top customers this week, your top customers this month and this year. The filters below are examples of custom filters that we can build. So Sales Matrix, a new feature we've just released is if you want to be able to filter your customer list, your product list for a specific use case, you can make a request and we can actually build those filters. The, the example being used by the HSK group is going to be around your short stock. So there's going to be a filter against your products for those short dated items and also a, a filter against your customers of who are the ones who buy the short dated items. So you'll be able to basically see that within the SWOT app moving forward. Um, we will let you know once that's been sort of released officially on, on your application. Um, but those custom filters are now available. So if you've been using SWOT for a while and there's been a filter that you would like, keep in mind that that filter can now be customized come back and talk to us about it. The other thing that you'll notice up there, there is the ability, I, I mentioned at the start that this isn't really designed for getting new customers. If you want to prompt around new customers, there is the ability to add prospects to the system. We can have a little prompt. It doesn't do much with them other than give you the ability to make notes against the prospect. Um, they will go into your list and you'll be able to see them. They'll come up as blue, a customer who's never bought from you. But basically um, it's just a nice little memory way, a memory trigger to know who your prospects might be at the moment. The other one I'll draw your attention to is the star, which is the favorites list. Now I use this heavily for my call planning. So for example, um, on Tuesday, I might be making a call plan for the rest of this week today. I know that I want to call in and see eco Econoline abrasives. I bring up that customer in SWAT and you'll see the star appears in the top right corner. I'm going to hit the star and it's going to add them to my favorites. I'm then going to scroll down. I'm going to talk to Ionia County community later in the week. I'm going to put a star against them. I'm going to keep going down my list. I'm going to go to those guys. I can do a search. You know, if I know that the name of the customer starts with an S, E, V, it's going to basically limit down to those people and I'm going to add them to my list. Now I've just added a few customers to my favorite list. Why did I do that? Well, what that's going to do is it's going to provide me with a, a very quick filter on my call plan for the rest of the week. So I'm back to the start. If I just hit my favorites, there's my call plan for this week. These are the ones I don't have to go scrolling through the list. These are the people I'm going to talk to today or I'm heading out to 
you know, Dubbo today, I'm going to list all the customers in Dubbo and I'm going to basically call in on them. When I basically do my call, I'm then presented with the SWOT analysis. The SWOT analysis is, as I mentioned before, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that the artificial intelligence engine is identifying against this customer. Now, I can see from the front screen that Air, Air Master Systems is a low revenue, high margin customer. So when I drill down, it's highlighting that one of the strengths of this margin is that they are a high margin customer. The other strength is that they've grown their revenue. It's not really huge revenue, but they've grown their revenue over the last 12 months and they've grown their margin over the tw last 12 months. There's no obvious weaknesses, which is great, but within, within the opportunities, there's a product here that they haven't bought in the last six weeks. We can see that they've been buying um, generally, not, not a product, but they've generally been buying um, um, and they haven't bought off us in the last six weeks. There's also a profile of what similar customers are buying. And this is the point I was making at the start around the way that you group. What's the definition of similar? Sales Matrix is going to use a couple of different definitions of similar. One definition is that grouping method that's coming out of your ERP system. For the HSK guys, that's the example of the providors going down to the level of Asian providors, Indian providors, et cetera. Within um, the system, Sales Matrix is also going to do a profile on what similar is based on their buying habits. It's going to profile customers that buy Big Macs as similar customers. So we know all these customers across each of these different groups are buying Big Macs. We also know that 83% of the time that people buy Big Macs, they're going to buy fries and a Coke with that. That's called a market basket. So it's going to profile not just based on groupings of the customers, but based on buying habits of the customers. And so you'll start to see upselling to, hey, they're buying the Big Mac, but they're not buying the fries and the Coke with that. You'll, you'll also see other things. So it, it's, it's determined that similar customers based on buying habits have bought the extreme melt, but this customer hasn't bought it. So it's trying to identify quickly and easily for you the things that are relevant. Now, what you might say to me, you'll always see here under the product similar customers bought, it will try and find five. It'll, it'll highlight the five most obvious, um, most revenue positive items that it can find where it's the highest correlation potential for this customer. But you may say, well, you know what? I know they're not gonna buy that two ply toilet tissue because they buy the 12 pack, not the six pack office. And I've already talked to them about the six pack. They don't have shelf space for the six pack. What you can do with, with SWAT is you can drill down on that and I can hide that item. If I hide it, it's now going to disappear out of my list. And right now it will now only show the four under that grouping and the fifth being this other one here, it'll show four. Tomorrow, when it runs the update again, it'll go and find a fifth one. So it'll keep looking for the five most obvious cross-sell opportunities. And as you action them, if they actually buy them, they will drop off automatically because it will sync up to your ERP system and it will bring in the fact that that's been purchased. And then you'll see it disappear off the list. If you know for whatever reason, say that's a superseded line, they're not going to buy it. Or, hey, we only sell those items to Subway stores. This customer is not a Subway, so we want to get rid of it. Well, I can just hide it as an action item. So I really should be dealing with each of my customers with just relevant points each time. As I deal with it, um, as I said, hopefully it means an upsell. There will be the sale transaction coming through and it will drop off. If I want to just make a note to remind myself, I can come in here and I can send an email to that customer. I can make a note. Um, I can basically have a look at the particular product. So who are the people who are buying this on, on a regular basis? It would come in and I can actually see the activity against this particular product that I can see Great Lace Fasteners are buying it, Kent Beverage are buying it, et cetera. So I can actually drill through from the customer to the products to see who buys those products. And I can then make an assessment as to, yeah, are they really the sort of customer who might be buying that particular product? You'll also see down the bottom here, there is a note section. So any notes that I make against this customer will appear in the note section. I can also get notes that appear, and I think there might be one against Bowers Manufacturing. Let's have a look. No, if something is classified as um, neither a strength, weaknesses, opportunity or threat, 
So here's one against the Curtis group. It will, the artificial intelligence engine will add the note. So it, the notes that are added by the artificial intelligence engine will be in black. Here it says average monthly sales are steady around 440. That's not a strength, it's not a weakness, it's just a point of note. It, it also says that they actually buy five different products off us. That's not a strength, it's not a weakness, that's, that's what they actually do. If it identifies, for example, that they always buy on a Friday, it would highlight a note there for you that says that they buy on a Friday. So again, the idea of this screen is to provide you the playbook to very quickly understand what's going on with this particular customer. You'll also see that there are a few other buttons down the bottom, the activity. So if I wanna actually look at what they've bought and when they bought, I can go to the activity screen and you'll see, um, and this is a screen that does vary. You can limit this to six months, 12 months or 24 months worth of activity. Um, by default, it will go to six months, but under the, the settings area, you can change it to a 24 months if that is relevant to you. The other thing you can change is this is defaulted to revenue. If you wanna see the units that they've bought off you, I can just click change at the top there. See, it says at the top showing units. I can click on that and I can change it to value, which means the, the, the revenue that we're generating. So I can see what products, how much they bought in, the, in, in each period from the activity screen. I can also look at the activity from a graphical perspective to see if there's seasonality of purchases. It looks like they're buying more frequently every two months and then the secondary month appears generally quieter. Um, but that didn't apply in, in, in November. Um, the other thing is that out of your ERP system, we will pull the contacts. Um, if, you, if you have the contacts sitting in a CRM system separate, we can actually pull those contacts through as well. The contacts interestingly has a, a location attached to it. So you'll see there that little location up on the right. I can actually bring up a map of that customer and it would highlight who else is in the same area of, as that customer within my customer base. In this case, it's finding that Curtis Products is at this address. I can't really see any other customers nearby. They would be highlighted on the map, but I could actually use that to find out you know where i'm driving to if i'm doing my call planning or you know so that is a relatively new feature it's only been added in the last few months you may not have noticed it yet because it's on the contacts page the contacts page is where we can pull through the address if the address isn't coming through obviously we can't highlight the address but we should have the address coming through from your erp system um, if not, we can change it. You should also have the, the, the multiple contacts if there are multiple contacts at each of the individual um, customers. The final button down here is the profile page. The profile at the bottom, group one, two, and three, will come through automatically from your ERP system. If they're wrong, you should fix it at the source, which is your ERP system. We then have demographics, which will only sit inside of SWOT. And again, these demographics will influence the accuracy of the AI engine. So for example, if we know, if you're dealing with supermarkets, say you're dealing with various IGAs, if you know that this is just a small IGA and its turnover is only, you know, a hundred to $200,000, then I might basically, that's a pretty small store by the way, I might group it like that. And then the artificial intelligence engine will start to look at similar IGAs. So they might be grouped as IGAs, you might then also, you know, within your group one down the bottom in your ERP system, you might group the Richies because they've got 180 odd IGA separate from, you know, your, your chains separate from your ind independence, et cetera. So what we do by having the demographics in here, we've, we can then look within say the Richies chain, which are the big stores, which are the small stores and, and therefore the AI engine becomes more accurate with the cross sell suggestions. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, this is optional, you don't have to come into the demographics area, but if you do fill in the demographics, you will get the benefit that this becomes more accurate as it, is, as it gets used by the AI, the AI engine. So if I come back to SWOT, hopefully that makes sense now. I'm, I'm basically, I'm, I'm getting clarity around um, Curtis. I've, I've just dropped in on, on Curtis. Um, I might now say, well, I, I wanna delete Curtis out of my call plan because I've already called on them. So I, from, from here, sorry, let's go back. I'll show you how to do it. I'm back on my home screen. I hit on the star, which is my, my, my favorites. I then hold down on Curtis product group and I can delete. It's not deleting Curtis. It's just removing them out of my favorites. 
I'll do that again. Beacon recycling, I've visited them. I hold down on beacon recycling and I delete them. Um, if you're using the Windows app, because you can use a mouse on Windows often, you'll, you'll see a different contextual menu. On an iOS, it should work the same. I'm on an Android device. It's the click and hold that allow you to remove them from your call plan. Uh, I will just quickly highlight this. Most of the people on the call are, are sales reps. So, you know, having a look at the product perspective isn't as relevant. As I mentioned, those from the HSK group, you're gonna have a new filter very shortly. Oh, and I've got the example here. You may already have it. The guys might've pushed it live only recently. Um, what are my products that are expiring inside the next three months? So you guys have been getting an Excel spreadsheet report sent to you about short dated stock. Um, we're now pulling that through automatically into SWAT. So you can actually quickly see if I've got short dated SWAT turned on. It's actually saying it's not supported, but that will be turned on shortly for you guys. My point here is if, if you're not the HSK group and there's lots of you who aren't, we can now write custom filters within this screen. That's a new feature of SWOT. Um, historically, those ones that start with the word top are the filters that are coming through by default. So I can see what my top products are this week and it will filter down by my top products. Um, I'm not gonna go in and show you the full details because the SWOT for products is effectively the same as the SWOT for, for customers with all the similar functionality. It's just a different perspective of, on looking at it. The other thing I will highlight, another new feature is the ability to send notifications and receive notifications. Um, so managers can now send notifications from within SWAT out to the reps phones. You can do that from the admin portal. You'll see the notification section in the admin portal. I can also receive those basically, those notifications as a rep and it's basically talking to me in that message. I can reply to those notifications, I can forward those notifications, et cetera. The idea behind notifications is at the moment, you can use them to communicate. So the great example is we've got a new product line. I wanna to bring to the attention of my reps that new product line. I can send out a notification from within SWAT to say, hey, this is the new product line, don't forget to promote it. Another example is, hey, don't forget that we've got a, a, a project on at the moment around the providors. Make sure you're having a look and using your um, conscious bias training that you've done recently um, to basically um, focus in on your opportunities within that area. Um, so those sort of notifications now available within, within SWAT. What we're actually gonna do with SWAT over time is we're gonna automate notifications based on what we're finding within the customers. So for example, here, um, we've got an opportunity for action fabrications, which is similar customers have bought the ProCell AA battery. Now, what we're gonna do, if that's a really red hot, you know, highly correlated opportunity, we'll actually start to push notifications out to the specific rep for that customer to say, hey, the ProCell AA battery, you should talk to this customer about that. Where that gets really powerful is where they stop buying certain products or they're buying out of pattern. If we know they normally buy on a Friday and today's now Tuesday and they still haven't bought last week, there's gonna be a push notification that comes out to say, hey, this customer normally buys on a Friday. They didn't buy last Friday. You really should chase up to see what's going on with that customer, why they didn't buy last Friday. So the, the notifications area of SWAT's gonna be enhanced dramatically over the coming months. And you'll see some real improvements in that area um, but at the moment, the notification area is about the communication internally. Um, in future, um, it's going to be a lot more than that. So those of you who are system administrators, you can log into the um, admin portal or the Windows app or even the app on your phone. And you can now start to send out notifications to your reps, either one by one or en masse if you wanted to. At that point, I'm conscious of the time. Um, we did have a late start, but um, I did want to open up to any questions that anyone had um, to see whether you know I can help. Um, otherwise, without questions, we'll, we'll start to wrap up. You can use the chat or you can unmute yourself if you did want to ask some questions. I'll give it another 10 seconds if anyone had any questions. Otherwise, I will stop my sharing there. Um, and basically finish up by doing this. George has unmuted yourself, question? 
No, I just wanted to thank you for uh, the information. It was very, uh, very handy. Ah, awesome. Well, the only thing I will say, if, if anyone does need help, um, you, you will find that we, this video um, and all our other videos, webinars that we've done are posted to our YouTube channel. If you want to jump on YouTube and search for Sales Matrix as one word or Sales Matrix SWOT, you will find YouTube videos like this one. Um, this will be posted later today. Uh, the other thing is, is if you do need help, um, feel free to reach out to me personally, um, Matt at salesmatrix, uh, salesswat.com. Um, feel free to give me a call on the mobile if you did have anything um, you needed clarified. Um, otherwise, thank you all for your time. Um, have a great day and good selling, as they say. All the best.